Hello, friends. Welcome back to Starlighter Coverage. We're here with the European edition, and we've got four good ones coming up for you today. Our first game already got canceled. We've been playing musical chairs with the schedule, but here we are. Zyori and Coddle Guy back once again. Coddle Guy, what's going on, man? Uh, it's going pretty good. Been a lot of casting already crammed in a short period of time, but it's uh, it's been a lot of fun. And uh, what are we at now? Day number 23 of uh, Star Ladder, I believe. Yep, on yep, today. yep. And uh, we get to go into the uh, European division, which is my debut into casting some European Dota. I'm excited Whoa. about that. Actually, no, I just casted European last night. We did, yeah, we, we did a, a game, Singleton, but uh, we got a whole bunch coming up today. First up is X Game KZ versus Fnatic, and uh, then we'll be moving into HR versus Cleave. We got two big ins to wrap up the day, though Secret versus Fnatic, mm -hmm. and then Navi versus Secret. That is the, the big kahuna at the oh end yeah. of the day. Uh, that's going to be the main event of oh today, yeah. if you will. But uh, for this matchup, X Game, uh, the three and nine. Uh, they're not going to be seeing uh, any Five sort of star ladder meeting. trip in their near future, but they're going to be going against Fnatic, who are only sporting a 3-2 record. Fanatic's they haven't quite been pick. able to put in a whole lot of games as of yet, so they're still technically in the running. Mm -hmm. So X game, if they have a grudge against Fnatic, they could want to you know, muscle up and try to take them out in this game. We, we, who knows? Yeah. Always important to remember in star ladder, though, there is some motivation not to be dead last. The bottom two teams automatically get relegated out of star series at the end of the season, so right. there is a battle. To, to be in the middle of the pack if you're not even going to qualify. That's so, true. A little bit on the line for everyone, but look at this. Batrider first pick from X Game, but Hani, he talked about it in the patch analysis. He was like, I think the biggest change is Magnus, and he didn't even get that big of a change. Ten but now you can remaining. empower people through BKB. So uh, no longer BKB Five no longer dispels it. Remaining. So old Svenny here might be farming up the Black King bar. Magnus is going to give him the cleave. He's going to be doing some... Some double cleaves time. and oh boy. Well, I don't know if he was watching the games that myself and Gods were Dada casting Dada. earlier this morning in the C division, but it actually was first departure that it picked up this same combo, the Magnus and Sven. They got stuck going against the Terror Blade, but just with the benefit of the heavy burst damage that already Sven offers, and then you put Ten that empower on top of that. They can swing like no one else. They're, they're mm -hmm. swinging for the Five fences, and they're going to be dealing mm -hmm. all sorts of crazy-ass uh, damage. So something to look out for. A lot of heavy bursts. They were really doing a lot He's of movement, a lot of smoke ganking. So it could be something that Fnatic are looking to imply for themselves. Yeah, and I'm never disappointed to see the, the Horn champion, uh, Magnus, one of my favorite heroes to watch. RP. He's always, ugly, though. Always good stuff. He's Whoa! He's a uh, come on. He's uh, he's looking at his hair. Well, he wasn't gifted at birth, but at least he can bring the fight. I guess you know. <laughs> Maybe he had a troubled youth, and he was just like constantly getting picked on. His lunch money was always in jeopardy, and yeah. Well, now he's reverse polariting everyone Fanatics from the local school bully to, to you know hopefully a brewmaster. I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Batrider, Brewmaster, uh, two heroes that were storming the last patch, and they weren't really changed to hell of a lot. Lasso uh, had a slight cooldown nerf, and Brewmaster, I think just one of his one of his pandas got ban. something. Um, oh no! It was just the, the crit now got uh, got it scales. So level four, it's the same deal, but mm -hmm. the earlier levels has a slightly longer cooldown. So two heroes that actually got nerfed, uh, albeit small ones. But yeah, I mean the, the the important thing is they still have the tools that have made Ten them such fantastic remaining. heroes to begin with. So you know, primarily X game just. They're Five right now not remaining. looking to flex their 6.82 muscles, just kind of sticking with the tried and true. And when your players have been not Fanatic's really practicing with the new patch pick. a whole lot, you might feel just a whole lot more comfortable playing the heroes that you've come more accustomed to. And then as time progresses, you can slowly get some more scrims in, some more practice time in with, uh, you know, working with 6.82 and maybe, f you know, being more flexible with your new heroes. Yes, sorry, the uh, the attack I of the killer headset pick. here as I'm having some issues this morning. Uh, but Terra Blade, rats, he'll be banned out. I still have not gotten to cast a Terra Blade game, and well, I guess he's pretty strong. That seems to be the consensus. Yeah. His landing phase may be a, a little bit weak, but all in all, he's a uh, he's pretty scary force. Yeah, even in the game earlier this morning that he was in, and it was actually uh, you know him going against the Magnus Fen combo, he had a really great early laning phase. He got a very quick power Ten treads, very quick bracer. Remaining. So you know one of his biggest flaws is that he's so squishy early on. He has one Five of the lowest you know life pulls in the game to start out, like 400. 50 life or something ridiculous yeah. like that but you know he got those early power treads and he got a lot of great farm but eventually he just couldn't handle the heavy burst damage that was coming his way and you're just kind of more focused on positioning and he didn't really try to do any sort of intense rat action which you normally see out of your terror blades so regardless we're not going to have to see him this game yep 
Well, Shadow Demon picked up for Fnatic. Uh, I'm a big Shadow Demon yeah. fan just in general. He's a great, uh, versatile Fnatic's hero. Uh, he does kind of need a, a roaming partner, though. He tends to shine when he's matched up or uh, paired with, like, a Kunkka or someone with a follow-up. And, well, as luck be have it, there's a Lena Inverse still pick. in the pool, and uh, Fnatic will give her a try here. Some teams have even been flexing a core Lena. Now, I don't want to call anything too soon here, but it is always a possibility. It's not mm -hmm. as luxurious, I guess, as getting your Marana, as X Games have already grabbed up for themselves, but uh, I'm curious to see how it's going to work. I don't think Lena, would she touch much at all in this patch? Uh, think, yeah, very right. little bit. Light Strike Array uh, got a, a general buff. Cast range improved by 25, up from remaining. 600 to 625. Uh, and uh, the stun duration scales a little Five bit better. Same at remaining. level one, but at that last point, uh, you get an extra 0 0.3 sec seconds worth of stun. Reserve you put that together time. with their already insane attack range, and you know maybe maybe they can make something happen with it. So mm -hmm. regardless, though, I oh, I always welcome a fresh, beautiful face into the draft. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, good duo. A lot of kill potential here across this Fnatic lineup. And if we're talking about like a position one Sven with these two supports, there's some pretty serious kill potential there. Set up from the Shadow Demon. Lena comes in with her combo. Sven starts swinging that sword around. Maybe throws out a storm hammer. Fnatic's Somebody's dying. Maybe Sven. throws out a storm hammer. I don't know. <laughs> don't get too excited. I don't want to see too many storm hammers getting thrown out. No. But yeah, you're absolutely right. Unfortunately, I didn't have the benefit of seeing Sven pick up the Agnum Sven. You know, uh, but he did pick up the uh, the new. Uh, well, what's it? Crimson, Ten the Crimson, uh, Crimson Guard. Crimson Guard, yes. Sir. It, it's a, it's a great item. Works kind of like a pipe, remaining. but for physical damage, he was one to pick it up on his own. You put that together already with his uh, War Cry, and you know oh, you can yeah. make a lot of things happen there. So it worked really nicely for them. We'll see if it's something they look to fall back on for X game though. They they get up his Majesty. The Wraith King, still sticking with the old standard. You'd think it was 6.81 for their side, but, uh, you know, he's a fantastic hero. Used as yeah. both a, a core or a support. Heavy durability, able to get in the mix, offers great utility with his aura. And, you know, what, what can you say? There's nothing wrong to say Diet about this guy. Unless fan. unless he does get kited around. But, you know, given that there doesn't look to be a Viper that could be potentially picked up here, I think he's in the clear. Yeah, uh, he was not touched too much in this patch. Uh, Reincarnation got a general nerf of now it costs 20 additional mana. So nothing that uh, the king will lose too much sleep over. Um, and still always uh, fall back Five on a soul ring or a uh, magic wand, if something like that, if he's having some mana issues there. But like you mentioned, pairs nicely with the Marana. Hard to say whether Fanatics he'll be a core or a support. As uh, I believe X Game have done previously, they've mostly run him as a core, but still some flexibility here. Fnatic with Spectre as their final pickup. So, hmm. You know what's funny is it was just recently on the Twitter sphere, if you will, that Trixie posted about a great a game that he had a, some sort of sensational comeback, and that's only... You know, because of the crazy new bounty system yeah, that's no been in play. No way, a crazy comeback at 6.82? Yeah, it's been Whoa. all over the place. But he, <laughs> the team he came back with had a Spectre involved. And I don't know if he's like, guys, guys, you wouldn't believe how good Spectre worked out. <laughs> we, let's go ahead and pick it. Let's go. And, and Hani's like, yeah, okay, fine. But no, realistically, though, Spectre's a great hero. And if you can't get to that point, and she, if she does come in, let's say, puts out the haunt, mm -hmm. manages to get off a great last hit, even if they're a little bit behind. Next thing you know, she's got a quick, you know, defusal. She's got a quick whatever she can need, and she can really be a nuisance. And, well, X game going on with the old tried and true. Grab up the razor to round out their draft. Yeah, the Lightning Revenant did get some decent nerfs. I, I liked the one change in particular that his ultimate uh, no longer persists through Aegis Death. I think that's the one thing, one of the things that really made him stand out is just why? Most other self-buff abilities like that mm. die when you die, like Exorcism, for example, and that gave Razor just such an edge uh, in terms of carrying the Aegis. Static Link no longer ignores Lincoln's Sphere, so I don't Ten know if Lincoln's going to be coming remaining. out this game, but now it properly blocks uh, the Static Link. Uh, the mana Five cost has been increased remaining. at all levels, so you can't spam out Static Link at that level 1, level 2 quite as easily. Uh, and now Plasma Field took a pretty decent nerf. So Razor, I have not seen him in any of the games we've cast so far in mm -hmm. 6.82, but uh, he he did get slapped around by the nerf stick a little bit. I've seen him good in plenty a bit, and from what I saw, he's still what he's always still been. Good he's old still good, yeah. He he still offers a lot. He's got great pushing potential. He's got great lane dominance, and as long as you can build up a reasonable uh, reasonable amount of survivability on him, he can get the job done. So, you know, I I don't think it's been enough to really hinder him in a way where he's not going to be as useful as he used to be. I think the objectives are still there. And uh, it shouldn't be too much of a problem for him to really take control. And I would imagine he's probably going to be repping the mid lane 
in this. Well, no, actually not. I, we have a brew on the court, so uh, it could be just kind of a you know safe lane style razor mm -hmm. and look to get up that early farm, get a hold, maybe that mech, be the mech holder for the team, and then just try to use that Eye of the Storm to get the objectives done. Yep, I think that is most likely the case. What a fuck it tends to head mid, especially on the Brewmaster. And uh, will be a tri lane built around Mantis. Reeves on the Wraith King, equal on the Marana, the pretty lady of the night. Uh, they will they will most likely be, be grouped up. Dota underscore minimap <laughs> underscore hero size. Dota underscore minimap underscore hero underscore size. We're, we're, we're both addicts. We're, we're addicted to the large minimap icons. Yeah, I was turned on by <laughs> Merlini when I, I noticed I tuned into his stream, and I know the icons on his map were just way too big. Yeah, he does like 1,200 or 1,300. I'm I, like, okay, I don't know. I don't need to go that crazy. Yeah, I think but standard is 600. I like the 9, 950. That's, that's my sweet spot right there. I'm getting pretty old, so I worry. Yeah. I can't see too well. <laughs> and the, the, the fault size is... It, it's a mini map for ants, and uh, yeah, I really like them a little more girth. So I like to be able to see uh, what the hell I'm looking at, and I feel like for me, 900 seems to be the magic number. Yeah, I, I also I, I think the most legitimate uh, comment I got about it is if you're on mobile, the slightly bigger icons make it a lot easier to see. Oh yeah. Uh, or if you're stuck on a smaller resolution, as you know, a lot of, something like only five percent of our viewers use 1080p because it's so bandwidth intensive. Mm -hmm. um, most most regions of the world, it's not really an option, or mo you're stuck on mobile or something oh, like that. Potato, so internet. once I heard that, I was like, you know what? You're right. I'm gonna make my icons bigger, and then I got used to it. Now I feel crippled if they're not <laughs> if they're not big. The little ones are. Oh, it's hard. It, the <laughs> yeah. struggle. Oh, oh, look, a hero in the mid lane. Oh, wait, that's just the tower. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, it's like sitting in the in the nosebleeds when you're uh, at a baseball game. You're like, I think that one ant is bringing a biscuit to that other ant. Oh, wait, no, a that's biscuit. a ball. <laughs> 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 Whatever. <laughs> oh man. Well, man, look at the look at this specter set. Wow. Whoa. This is this is something else. I mean, it was Fashion Week recently in uh, New York City, I guess. But yeah. this fortunately, is Magnus is giving her the old elbow, giving her the old action slash. Get out of here, baby! Just you know, punching oh, her out. That's but a pretty nice shot, actually, <laughs> right there. <laughs> like he's giving her a headlock. They <laughs> all have a pretty formidable lineup as far as uniforms are concerned. Even Sven just really sporting a nice unicorn horn kind of a get up right there. And jeez, yeah, look at all these new items. Well, I mean, Svenny. I mean, I know we're at a pause, obviously, so you're oh, folks yeah. are not missing too much. I, but I'm all about the. If we have to talk cosmetics, I mean, I don't know if you had the moment to check out X game side of things but uh, uh did they did they lose lacking. the cosmetics war yeah they, they this is looking pretty plain jane here kind of and uh, i'm not too satisfied with this one if you're going to go into the battle if you're going to go into the fray at least pop a collar at least get a little extra sequence on your vest or something this is a little bit disappointing. I don't want to say it's the reason why they haven't been performing that well, but well, Wraith King's got a, a bitchin' pauldron here, a shoulder of the eternal rain. That's that's pretty I'm cool. I'm not satisfied with that. That's no, a no, 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 no. <laughs> we need more. Look at look at Spectre. We need more of that. But yeah, this, here we go. This Spectre set is is pretty cool. So okay, finally in it here, and uh, we'll see how Fnatic want to set up their lanes. This is the the team that seems to be a little a little more uh, harder to predict with the laning phase, and I don't see an obvious off laner here. Um, Trixie has been playing the position one on the Spectre. Matumba Man tends to be their mid player. Uh, in the hands of Sven, I, I would have expected Hani to head mid on the Magnus, which I think is still a reasonable choice, but uh, time will tell. Batrider's going to come down. He's got a ward. He'll try and plant it using this new little uh, entryway through the trees here. And he'll, he'll be scouted when he puts this ward down. Boogie should have saw it, and this should be a pretty easy sentry for Fnatic. And they're going to sweep through the jungle right here, make sure there's no sort of early aggressive movement coming out from X game. And if there is, they can kind of pounce on him. Uh, you know, Shadow Demon's probably one of the best at setting up a first blood for pretty much any hero in the game. So mm -hmm. not going to get so luxurious this time. Fnatic's going to go ahead and pull back, and it looks like we're going to just move into the standard laning phase. And, well, uh, Zyra, if you don't mind, I can lead off some introductions over here. Go I'll, at I'll it, go out with Fnatic right here on your radiant side, leading off as their captain. Around the mid lane, we got another, the Mr. Hani himself. This guy's big and bad and, well, quite attractive, and he's playing your Magnus. Well, we're back in the mid lane, and we got Madumba Man. He's going to be playing your Sven along the bottom. We got Come With Me, going to be playing your Lena, representing that nice Arcana. The Behind him, we got begins. Boogie, going to be playing your Shadow Demon. And finally, that leaves Trixie playing that fabulous-looking <laughs> Spectre. Yes, sir. And on the dire side, their lanes will be pretty much expected uh, the way they've drafted here. Stallcat will take the offlane Batrider. Watafaka will take the Brewmaster mid. And up top, it will be a safe lane try. Mantis on the Razor. Reeves will take Helm on the Wraith King. And it will be equal here. 
on the Priestess of the Moon. But uh oh, what a fuck! He's gonna be in some trouble as Boogie sets it up. Come with me, will be there to connect with the stun, but they'll storm bolt it first. There's your light strike array, and now it's a matter of right clicks. Brew, he's one tanky mother out of the gate. Can they bring him down? Reeves comes in, connects with a stun on Delina. And looks like that will ensure his survival unless they can continue to chase him down. Disruption in five seconds. Boogie wants it. Lena's in hot pursuit. And this is a real highway police chase right here as they continue to get him out and out. I mean, this what is a has got the speed advantage. It's a lot of time away from the mid lane, though. This is a whole True. first wave of creeps that this uh, brew does not get to be a part of. Completely zoned all the way back. Doesn't even have a whole lot of regen to begin with as he's going to be saving to go straight for the bottle. With two shared tangos, he's actually walking all the way back to the fountain. And now oh. they'll wrap around onto Reeves. Stormbolt will start it off. Boogie in position to get off the disruption. Alina, Light Strike Array will be on the mark, and they'll still find a first blood. Regardless, it's taken out, well, by the Radiant, but still they find the kill they were looking for, and like you said, Brew gets absolutely nothing for the first minute and a half. That's really, really harsh early mm -hmm. in the game, in the early laning phase, so, you know, it's going to be a lot on X game to kind of come back from that, and Brew's forced to invest in a TP scroll. Given that they are cheaper now, a new discount was implied by Ice Frog, only 100 gold to get a hold of a TP scroll now, as opposed to your usual 135, so I'm sure what the fuck is happy about that, at least he gets to save a little bit of something, but... Yeah, your everyday special. Your everyday special, but unfortunately, uh, speaking of Brew, he is going to have uh, what looks like a bit of a lag issue, or Brief disconnect here as we're going to get another pause on the field. Yeah, Brewmaster with his connection issues, but a great way for Fnatic to start off this game. They'll take a, a minor gold lead here and a bit of an experience edge. They'll actually go the way of X game to get things started as the two roaming supports have spent a lot of time outside of the lane. But uh, one thing that has been going well for X game is the offlane. Stalkat is already level three. Uh, he's started with boots, but he's found a couple of last hits, which is great news for Batrider mm -hmm. out of the gate. And old Trixie here, he's, he's struggling a little bit. This wave will get shoved into the tower, so uh, that zero CS is maybe not something to get too concerned about, and he should be able to clean him up here under the tower. But uh, not the easiest start for him as the supports has, haven't been in lane. But now they'll rotate down, and they'll start stacking and pulling. They did indeed get that sentry. So Batrider is flying blind and needs to be a lot more the careful now that uh, he knows... Some of the supports are, are down in his lane. Bounty Rune will get picked up by the Marana, and a Haste will get grabbed by Stallcat. And they might just move on from that. They pop out the smoke from the Wraith King, and it looks like X Game are ready to make something happen themselves. They consider going towards the mid lane, but it looks like the target's going to be on the top as Hani is pushed pretty far forward here. Dedo. He does have the skewer to fall back on to get away from this, but if they time out these stuns, they should be able to lock him down and in place. They're looking to go on the hunt here, moving into the side trap. Hani knows it's coming. There goes your first set of nukes. Stun. Stun. Can they lock him down in time? Hani, Desperation Skewer, can't get it off. Aww. And yep, they sure enough lock him down long enough to get the kill and even things up one to one. Yeah, he's one tanky rhino, but against the wrath of the Marana arrow, not much you can do. Mid lane going pretty well from a Tumba man, though. He's up to 10 last hits, and Brewmaster still struggling a bit. Only found five himself, so Sven should have at least some decent farm. Going for a Warcry Stormhammer build, saving the cleave for a bit later on. And ooh, we'll ooh. see what a fucka initiated on as Hani comes on in towards the mid lane. Warcry's used, but. Will they actually be able to find this kill? And Hani will skewer forward. Matumba Man has a stun in two seconds. Two PT TPs coming forward. Shockwave will finish him off. Now can they find the recovery kills? It's a three on two. Matumba Man connects with a stun on two. Marana chucks a few arrows his way. Will leap forward to give him the movement speed edge. And Matumba Man looks like he will burn to death. Hani will survive, but still a pretty good trade for the Radiant side yeah. as they did force out quite a few rotations. And wow, even another TP coming in as well. It will just be... Our friend here rejoining the lane, Mr. Waterfuck. Well, that's himself. four people involved in hanging out in this mid lane party for the side of X Games, mm -hmm. and now they're all forced to go and take the long walk uh, back to their bay or back to their lane appropriately. And only Razor was the one who was kind of holding strong and finding the farm for himself. But that left opportunities for Trixie on the bottom lane to get some CS under his belt right now. Looking to push it on four. Now 14 and seven, second as far as CS goes. So we're very happy about that one. Meanwhile, mid lane. Bit of a trade here as he throws out the clap here on Matamba Man, but Matamba Man's have to go step back and continue to just kind of get some CS for himself. He's got that bracer. He's looking to go for the early drums, and 
Well, we'll see where he decides to take it from there. Yep. Oh, top lane. Skewer back onto Mantis. He'll take a couple of tower shots, and they'll have more than enough to bring him down. Lena gets credit for that one. And Fnatic level it out once more. 3-3. Three to three. The smoke rotation from Reeves and Equal rendered pretty unsuccessful as, uh oh they ping out Lena. Maybe they'll still find a kill nonetheless. Smoke gets path. revealed. Uh-oh, he tries to smoke. He goes, uh-oh, there's somebody here, folks. Nice. Defensive disruption. English. Boogie can't find it. Tried to blaze it up, but the DEA was right there at the front door to kind of shut her down. So, unfortunately... Not going to be so successful, and you see that path really shine right there, one of the new features of this map. But, you know, all in the meanwhile, still, Trixie, all by his lonesome, in this bottom lane, a specter of all people you don't want to be getting this early farm, can really bring the pain later into the game. So Fnatic still pretty confident about that one. As long as they can keep attention elsewhere and create that space, they're very hard. Yep. And uh, what a fuck at getting pressured so hard in terms of falling uh, once and also getting zoned out in the early levels. He's not going to have a fast level 6. He's not even level 5 yet. And Sven has already found his god's strength. So what a fuck it grabs a double damage rune. But his life is difficult. And this makes him suscept uh, susceptible to ganks uh -oh. once more. Stormbolt to start things off. Light Striker Ray just barely connects. There's the Dragon Slave. And that's another <laughs> dead bear. I heard it's hunting season. Yep, and you know what? These guys are making great use of this lockdown and setup potential. I mean, if it, whether it's going to be starting things off with the disruption, then you can follow it up with an easy Stormbolt, or follow it up with the Skewer, and Lena's right there to back things up as far as getting out her own Light Strike Array. And you mentioned in the recent patch notes that it makes it a little easier as the range has been increased just by a hair, but... Well, it's, it's enough to get something going, and they're going to continue this aggression as they go to the bottom lane. Uh-oh, Batrider flying off to the right-hand side, desperately trying to get away from this one, but the disruption will land. Trixie steps on forward, Soul Catcher, and they blast down the bat from the skies above, and they pick up another sweet kill for themselves. Yeah, this slaved dragon that Lena has doing some serious work helping in these kills, and she'll now find level 4. Trixie grabs his level 6, picks up his phase boots. Boogie also finds his level 4. Uh, we'll hold on to that skill point for now, but that second point in skill ca uh, soul catcher already helping the, s the skill catcher. Jeez. Uh, now grabs the shadow poison for some extra scouting potential and, of course, all that extra damage. They'll rotate mid once more, and what a fuck is still not level 6 means he could possibly take a tumble. Matumba Man has a couple of bottle charges, so he'll have at least one Storm Bolt, if not two. And with the supports missing, he'll just back up and try to get a little bit of lane control back. Man, I feel feel a little bad for this Brewmaster. He's just not off to a good start. Yeah, he's been having tough times right off since uh, the start of the game, and they're not looking to let up here. If they can get one more kill on him before he gets that level six, that would be, that would be the dream. But... For now, he's got a little bit of backup here. you got your Marana lingering nearby and your Wraith King, so maybe instead they can look to bait something out potentially as they know the supports on the opposite side are also missing here. So you could see a bit of a clash right here, but regardless, pretty action-packed game thus far. Nine kills at about seven minutes in. I I'm pretty happy about that. Mm -hmm. Arrow flies through in the mid lane. Will miss on Matumba Man. He'll actually man up onto Watafuka, but takes a clap. Needs to be just a little bit careful here. Another support coming around on the high ground. Uh -oh. Reeves with a stun ready. Matumba Man... He's getting a little too feisty, but the haunt flies through. He'll survive the initial onslaught. Marana goes up to the high ground. Stormbolt comes through. It'll be enough to bring down the Brewmaster. He just barely survives. Is now Trixie wanting another one. Won't be able to find it as Marana hops to safety onto the high ground. But still a great trade for Fnatic. Only a one for nil. But again, they take out this Brewmaster before he can find his Oh, top six. lane Shadow Demon so incredibly low and gets whipped in the backside. Uh, it looked like they were considering making a go on him. They pulled out the Disruption and the Soul Catcher, but... Razor swiftly jumps back in there and, uh, well, takes advantage of his early farm and that Radiance buckler and what have you and the phase the boots and just kind of lays it in on him. So X game finally gets something going for themselves and they're happy to take that. But yeah, in that mid lane, the Tama man, I thought he was going to be a little too greedy lingering about, ate that stun, but because he lingered about, got his own stun off and that was the reason Radiance Rude did fall. Yes, sir. Man, and this Marana, he's all about those bounty runes. I feel like Equal's gotten at least... Uh, three of the four that have come out so far and finding a little bit of extra experience there, pushing him close to his level five, which is always good news for support Marana. She tends to struggle a little bit in those early uh, early bouts of experience farming. Trixie down bottom. We'll just come around the backside and start chipping at the Marana. He is level eight to her now level five, and even though she'll leap uh -oh. away, it was nerfed a little uh, bit in this last patch, and yeah, Trixie's just going to chop uh -oh. her down. That Desolate doing See some work. Attack. And nothing that the Priestess can do. That'll make it 7-5 in Trixie. Now 2-0-1 with Pretty Penny under his belt. 
Yep. Radiant's top tower is under I'm attack. I'm not too sure if he's going to look to immediately turn that stout shield into the early vanguard. You know, most people can kind of cringe at the item, but I feel if you get it in a respectable amount of time, it could definitely be utilized very nicely on specific heroes. Missing. And I feel Spectre is one of those heroes that can do it. So we'll see if it's something he considers investing in. Yeah. But those phase boots already going to work right there, being able to have that extra move speed and damage catches out Marana. Not even a leap is safe for There's her. your ring of hell. So good call. Perhaps it will be the vanguard coming out for Trixie. And more of that fighting Spectre build has risen to popularity. A lot of that has been based around uh, the urn, kind of drums, uh, those kind of items. But mm -hmm. an early Vanguard definitely follows suit where you can hop in and you're, you're just, you're nigh unkillable, at least for a nice five, ten minute window where right clicks really don't hurt so much. Wraith King in the top lane, Soul Catcher will fly through and just look at all that burst damage. They won't quite be able to bring him down. They thought they had the kill, but he will hang, uh, hang around just a bit too long. Boogie gets the kill. Now Mantis caught inside of the RP to keep the Shadow Demon alive. Lena's there to stagger the stuns and Hani will finish him off with a shockwave to the face. Two for nil, going the way of Fnatic. Yeah, very nice grab right there, and Trixie definitely getting Dyer's involved using the ultimate attack. to get up there, and now has another thousand gold, and he's going to have his vanguard promptly so, and be able to swiftly move to that secret trap to obtain that. And well, a lot of movement, especially coming out from the side of Fnatic, is clearly paying off for him as they push mm -hmm. ahead nine to five. It's going to be an early look at the net worth, but it is Trixie on top. Just a hair ahead of that Razor, being thankful to take him down on that one. As far as Graf goes, only about 1k in their favor, so still an early game. We still got that precious bounty loot to consider. Still could be oh anyways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, Matumba Man, he's picked up Power Treads and just gone for the Bracer, so nothing too crazy on him quite yet. Uh, I reckon he'll be looking towards uh, Blink, BKB, Mask of Madness, Crit kind of style. Uh, all fairly standard stuff on Sven. I don't think this patch has changed too much in the way of, of his item build. Uh, when talking to Hani about the Aghanim Scepter on Sven, it was one of those, yeah, that sounds cool, but Sven already has the problem of not having enough item slots. So what do you sacrifice towards the late game to get the Aghanim Scepter? And I think that's you a You know what, to be honest, though, when point. you have a team with a reasonable amount of cores, that Aghanim Scepter ability can really add a whole lot. You're talking a double yeah. damage amount on your whole team including when a Spectre is going to be nearby, and she will be in the fray fighting it out. I think if you have the gold later down the road, it's definitely worth it, but this is just my opinion, and I have yet to even see it picked up, so what the hell do I know? Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I know, uh, just in the context of Hani, he was a bit of a naysayer uh, of the patch, out, patch notes out of the gate. Maybe Trixie can do some convincing. Listen, I want this damage buff, Hani. Matumba Man, do it. They'll speak to each other and finish where, where Hani can't interject. Yeah, and I won't know what the hell they're talking about. But <laughs> regardless, for now, they're making it worth their while here. The power treads were complete there on the Sven. I'd imagine next is going to be those drums up on the docket right there. We saw that the Vanguard was complete there on Trixie, so that adds a bit of survivability. Now he can look to move on to a little bit of damage, whether it be a Diffusal Blade, which is the first thing that pops out to me because you're also going against a Wraith King. It'd be nice to be able to burn his mana down and not allow him to be able to come back. But meanwhile, uh -oh. he's getting attention right now. Blinken coming out. They do get a hold of the lasso. Gets the haunt off, but will be enough time to quickly disjoint, and they will quickly shoots off to the mid lane and avoids the danger but rotations to come in from Fnatic they want to get something going themselves they got a Magnus with an RP and they're ready to use it skewer forward RP catches on nothing and Hani unfortunately just flexing his muscles but not really getting anyone with it forced to waddle back it's a bit of a whiff but Tumba Man with a, a haste rune online rotating his way through Hani takes the stun as the moonlight shadow catches him off guard it's a five hero rotation from X game and they'll find a kill out of it rather unfortunate for the Magnus but um, well, Fnatic have a decent enough lead that they can afford a, a single, single death here. Uh, tower in the bottom lane. Dyer's Looks like it will fall. No reason not to glyph it, Fnatic, but oh, they'll, they'll that, not that's glyph bad. It. Yeah, Considering that, I mean, we haven't talked about it yet for, you know, at the start of this matchup, but in the recent patch that when you use a glyph on your tier one tower and then the tower falls, you get that glyph right back. So there's no reason you should not be using it for any and every tier one tower in yeah, the game. Really isn't. Even if it's destined to fall, that's an extra three seconds. Dyer's They're stuck wailing tower. into the tower that's, that's uh, essentially immune to their damage. But hold this big fatty stack in the jungle. Bat Rider will find it. He'll clear it out. This is a nice steal for X game. Not oh, only yeah. denying the farm from Fnatic, but now getting Stallcat one step closer to a four staff. He's already got his blink dagger and... Um, well, he'll have a nice bout of gold now under his belt. What a fucker. We'll kind of get left behind. Matumba Man looking to close the gap, but we'll just back out. Ooh, Arrow just nips his whiskers there, but does not connect. He will be moving into a drum of endurance with uh, that robe of the Magi hanging out at home. It is interesting that Wadafuck on the brew opted to go with the power treads kind of build, not your usual standard arcanes kind of you get up on a brew. You know, sometimes yeah. they can run into a bit of mana problems and... You know, this makes things a little more tempting for if the Spectre does go Diffusal, because next thing you know, you're not going to have enough mana to do a Primal Split, and, 
Well, you know, we'll see if it ends up working out for him for now. I mean, just something I, I tend to notice from time to time. But for now, mid lane, back to your standal separation of farm right here. Matama Man gets uh, what looks like his drums on the quarry right here. He They're going for three sets of drums, it looks like. Trixie will be moving into that same build. Not a fast Crimson Guard, as uh, some members of Twitch chat were implying. And come with me on the Lena. Looks like that's where he's going to go as wow, well. Boy. Bracer into Robe. Fanatic. Fans of the percussion, I guess. Yeah, they triple get drums getting into the, their their roots there. I personally, the man who likes to separate, but maybe a little little keyboard over there, a, a guitarist. The vocals got to get covered, but they're yeah, all about yeah. the drums. You know, um, I don't know. It's one of those items that the the aura aspect is is pretty minimal, and it is a good value item in terms of how much stats it gives you for the item slot and the the ease of the build up. So, a good item that'll give everyone kind of an edge coming into this mid game, and I guess that's a sign that they'll want to keep up the aggression and really keep having this specter involved quite a bit. That'd be the best I can reason it. Mid lane, though, bat smoked up. They'd love to get a grab on Matumba Man if that's possible, and they're lingering about with the blink ready to go, but uh, no opportunity going to be there just yet, even trying to bait out the Wraith King, who does have his level 6, so even if they manage to burst him down here, he's going to be coming back for a second life. Arrow going to fly, but even though uh, Sven was slowed right there, it's not going to catch Sackley, going to be flying out. From the Razor, Mantis trying to get away from this one, but he's going to be running down the wrong side of the road here and gets quickly taken apart. It's Hani being able to get the last hit on that one. So what looked like a potential opportunity for them to get a pick off quickly blows up in their face. Fnatic come out on top and now bulldoze forward into this mid lane and going for this tier 1 tower. Yep. So here we go. Glyph used at this tier 1 tower. Nice heads up play from X game. But I love that Fnatic are getting involved with Trixie. He's been using this ultimate very actively. Putting that vanguard to good use. There's nothing worse than seeing a Spectre go for an early vanguard than just sit there and farm, farm, farm. And I think they're playing this, uh, this build quite right. Tier 1 tower will go down, equal behind the tower, needs to be careful, will leap into the tree line here, and will TP back to safety, Stalkat coming in, will find a lasso on the boogie, but he's all by himself, yeah, there's no support, no force staff, <laughs> eee, Trixie can chase you to the high Where's ground, friend, <laughs> now what a fuck, it comes in, primal split, they'll go right on to Matumba Man, but defensive disruption comes out, Mantis will throw out the plasma field, but to little avail, connects with a stun, no just way. gonna try to TP home, oh and he lives, Lena's there with the stun, and Nice teamwork from Ooh, Fnatic. A bit of comedy of errors, I'd say, from X game on that one. Couldn't quite get yeah. to deny, and then Moran desperately leaps out and TPs away, which she does, but that leaves Batrider all by his lonesome when he tries to get a nice isolation play with that last one. Brew's not quite there in time, and then Brew tries to make a go, and, well, they can't even capitalize on taking out the Sven, who promptly gets away. So everything's still coming up Fnatic for now, but... We'll see. This Razor's still finding a fair amount of farm for himself, and with that Eye of the Storm, should be able to get the objectives done. He's got the mechanism already complete, and he's already building towards that Agnum Scepter, so not yep. too shabby for him. Yeah, I think that Batrider Lasso would have been okay if it was anybody other than Spectre chasing him down because he made it up to the cliff and, you know, anyone else would have just stood there and said, well, see you later there, Dyer's Mr. Batrider, but Spectre, he knows no cliff. He'll just cruise on up there with the Spectral Dagger and eek, eek. Well... Mm. Fnatic in good shape, though. They've got about a 1,000 gold lead, somewhere about 1,500 experience, and I think the biggest thing to report is this Blink Dagger now up on Hani's Magnus. 17 minutes in, not the best timing, but still within acceptable parameters, and mm -hmm. prepare for some big RPs here, Coddle Guy. You Buckle know, that seatbelt. The one we saw bottom, my, my, my seatbelt was buckled, but I had a bit of whiplash <laughs> trying to watch that one. But, you know, now with this, is going to make it a lot easier of a setup, and it looks like he's itching to use it here as he looks to go for it. Oh, God, oh. Hani, please! <laughs> oh, come on! I jinxed him. I'm sorry. Oh, oh. no. Oh, biscuits. He whiffed it again. <laughs> well, biscuits again. <laughs> Hani. Oh, he's, uh. he's so excited. He's so eager to make a name for himself in 6.82. He just needs to pump the brakes, take a few deep breaths. Yeah, he, he, he's aspirin. not happy about the patch, too. If you look at his Twitter, yeah. he's just like, yeah, this patch, you know, this, these RPs. Yeah, he's, he's swearing that he maybe needs to hit the gym a little bit harder for that one, but, you know, whatever. Oh, bottom lane, fight breaks out right now. Batrider under the gun right here. Boom, gets slammed from the big Laguna Blade coming up from Come With Me. And, oh, Arrow, <laughs> right behind. And, well, not going to be able to be on the mark. And Fnatic do again. Come out on top, getting the nice swift pickoff on that Bat Rider, pushing them ahead 12 to 6. Yep. Uh, Moonlight Shadow was deployed there, prompting them to put down a sentry, and they also just found a little consolation ward that happened to be within range. So, uh, kind of a double win for Fnatic, a ward kill, and uh, they shut down the Bat Rider. 
Up top, Mantis may take out this tower. Glyph is used by Fnatic this time. Hani galloping his way in, looking for the skewer. Can't find it. Will fake pump it, but there's your demonic purge. Can Mantis survive this? Matumba oh. Man coming in, connects with the stun, and they'll have the damage to bring him down. The tower stays standing, and they should be able to secure the deny. Hani gets redemption and is now able to take down that Razor, and will get the swift deny. And you know, being able to take advantage of the fortification this time just goes to show how important it can be. So. They make it work in the meanwhile. They're going to hang out in this top lane. Well, we got X Game looking to congregate up here as well. They're looking to rotate in for it. Oh, it is no. a blink four. There wants Ven, but he pushes himself way out of the way, and it's not going to happen. But there's your stun. going to fly on the Tamba Man. Is he going to be able to waddle himself out of this one? No, he ends up getting bursted down and taken down his Reeves. The one to come out on top right here. Brewmaster jumps forward. They are able to throw up the Shadow Demon up into the air right now. Stunned out with the Ray Fire Blast, and this should be an easy two man takedown for X Game. Yeah, the tower gets denied, but they're right there with the response and find a, uh, a duo of kills. Glancing at the graph, we'll put a little bit of gold into their pockets, but Fnatic still with a decent gold lead is that whole time. Trixie just farming away. He's up to 3,100 gold, and hell, he may be just pulling up for a decently timed radiance at this rate. Yep. Uh, and it's also important to note, I was talking about this with gods before, this ward right over here, uh, you know, it's this a new spot guy. that's been introduced, and most people are still considering, you know, the spot over here to kind of count things out, but this this gives a lot of fantastic That's vision, and, and, yeah. and you know the player they might not be used to having the counter ward up there, so we'll we'll see how long it takes for you know Fnatic to maybe recognize that there's a ward up there, but that's a great deal of intel that could be coming the way mm -hmm. of X game. Yeah, finally leveling out the the plateaus a little bit uh, across the map. I like that. I like that quite a bit. Blink Dagger now up on the Sven, so he's got some gap closing abilities of his own. Also finding level 13 means that god strength a little bit more potent. Trixie on hot pursuit. He wants equal. There is a leap available. He'll use it and Trixie will break off the assault. Will uh -oh. just haunt instead and says, well, you might be able to leap away, lady, but I can track you down with the haunt. He will not hop to one of the illusions, though. Instead, Dyer's we'll just kind of use it for scouting and tell and just go back to farming. Mm -hmm. He's got another there was a bat rider nearby. Maybe was a little nervous about, you know, oh, getting caught out with the lasso, but wow. All right, so up top, Shut Lena finds a kill on the Brewmaster, but ends up uh, dying herself. So still able to trade one for one. Pretty solid there. Uh, but yeah, I think this is a time where Trixie does not want to die. He's got a lot of unreliable gold, Dyer's very close to his top relic. Top this is the time top. to play it safe and be a little bit more passive. The Vanguard has already proved worth it, 4-0-4 four, four in the first 20 minutes. Now just pump the brakes a little bit, play some defense, and get that next big core item up. I certainly agree with that. And you know, Batrider back to his usual bottom lane right here. He does have those usual Batrider tools that you'd love to have. He's got the blink, he's got the four staff, he's ready to make it work for now, but you know, we'll see. Now level eleven with that level two lasso. You know, it did get yeah. the recent change. It cost a little bit more mana, but nothing too significant. And well for mid lane here, it's just more of separation and farm once more. Either team not looking to really commit to anything just yet. And uh, f to be honest, both teams as well, not significant like Roche kind of a team. So we might not see your typical kind of early Roche at the 15 to 25 minute mark. They're going to have to wait it out a bit till they get more ideal items to bring it down rather quickly. Because when you got the pit in this tiny little nook over here, you got to make sure you can take it out and you got to take it up with you. Yep, it is, it is a nook indeed. Very tiny little area. And uh, I don't think X Game will be too interested. I feel like that just sets up for amazing RPs. If you've got all five heroes in that pit, that's that you're you're rolling the dice if you know that RP is off cooldown and the Magnus is alive. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think Stalkad he's been playing a little a little funky this game. Maybe a little bit too YOLO at times, if you will. One three and three. A couple of those deaths were just solo. I got him, guys! I got him! Oh crap! Nobody's nearby. That's my bad. Uh, so hopefully they can they can kind of get on the same page a little bit and and be there to follow up when Bat Riders in a, in a position to connect with those lassos. You really can uh, test the teams like fluidity and chemistry with each other when you got a hero like that that's trying to get a proper initiation and you want everyone to be able to focus that primary target and burst them down rather quickly. And I know that target would love to be the Spectre if they can get a hold of him. So we'll, we'll see if that's going to be next up on the agenda here. But pings are going to fly out here. Hani is going to be looking to defend this tier two tower. They're weighing it out in the back, and uh, it is Drake Cat here. Oh, fly, jump in, blink, grabs Hani, looking to pull him right back into his enemies. It's taking a bit of time, but there's your jump in, clap. Hani really low, skewers him to the other side of the grounds, but he does end up falling, but the big burst flies out. They take out the Bat Rider. Primal Split going to be popped out here from the Brewmaster. Ends up being a one-for-one -one trade for now, but they're looking to make a potential go on Trixie. Nope. Just throw him into the midair and maybe consider going for a retreat. A bit questionable as far as whether they want to make something happen or not. And there's your second. Tornado going to throw him right up in the air. But Matamba Man jumping right in with that blink dagger. Ooh, disruption. 
Locks him in place. There's your stun, though. And what a fuck. A will fall in a mega kill streak now picked up by Trixie. Yeah, a little bit scary. 5 0 and 5 as they can bring down the Spectre, then. There's that huge comeback goal that uh, we've seen so much of. Big play from Hani, though, to start that off. He was very low, still managed to get off the RP, skewer him into this kind of odd spot here, and force the Brew to do almost a panic ulti. And uh, Fnatic were ready to capitalize when he came back into bear form. And ends up being a one for two. Not too bad of a trade, but most importantly, that final kill does secure Trixie his Radiance. Mm -hmm. So now he's burning up a storm and not only making his farming easier, but will be doing a lot of damage and disabling those Blink Daggers. It makes people like Moran a little bit nervous because that Radiance can do some serious damage and you're already trying to you know, work with some precious positioning here and you don't want to get these illusions in your face when you're trying to land an arrow and get some setups happening. So something she will have to you know, be a yeah. little more cautious and worried about it. Also, it looks like a Matamba Man does pick up the Mask of Madness kind of a build, so not going too unorthodox with his build, uh, you know, just looking to go heavy burst damage and, and quick succession. So yeah. for now, he pulls it out down. going right towards that mid lane, because if you get a nice setup, lead things off with a fantastic RP, he blinks forward, gets a great stun off, and then like three slashes later, you're taking down three opponents. Ooh, so. mid lane, Yule's on to Mantis, the follow-up will be there, come with me, will fall, but drops the hammer before he goes down, now it's left to Trixie to get this solo kill on Mantis, he'll find it, what a fuck is stuck without an ultimate for 10 seconds will not have an escape avenue and will go down arrow flies through but will be off the money and a double kill for Trixie as he shows off that radiance in the heat of battle yep a well worthy trade there and the Alina and the last like ditch effort gets out the Laguna which is most important you know but this is where things get a little interesting you know in 6.82 you got uh, you got Trixie here on your specter building up a pretty serious bounty we look and you know the team overall has got a pretty significant lead so you got to consider maybe you're going a little more for Protect 1 now. If you do lose the Spectre, you could be handing over a pretty purse to your opponent. Mm -hmm. And the net worth uh, T-wise is actually not that different. Only about 500 in favor of Fnatic. They do have a decent experience edge. They're getting a little more top-heavy. Sven and Spectre towards the top, but the rest of X game kind of farming semi on point with each other. Razor still uh, looking pretty strong. It looks like he will make a pit stop uh, from his Agadim Scepter into a BKB. So going for some magic immunity here and uh, pretty darn close to that recipe. So I do like this build out of uh, the Razor. Go for the early mech and then you just go for the, the value point booster to get you some of those, those valuable HPs. 1,600 hit points on him and pretty tanky. Mm -hmm. Sven blinks forward, grabs a haste for himself, promptly picks it back, but... You know, top lane, we got the uh, the Lena rolling side by side with Trixie right here, you know, playing it a, a little cautiously as she will look to scout things out. But, you know, the tier one still standing up here. I would imagine that, you know, Fnatic, they're, they're looking to farm up. They don't really have a, an overall push heavy team. And given Sven does pull out the God Strength, he can rip down a tower rather quickly. But you're kind of playing a little more cautiously. You're worried about the blinking initiations coming from your brew, coming from your bat, the Moonlight Shadow that could be coming your way. So you got to play a little more defensively. And speaking of which, Moonlight Shadow is pulled out here, but they're not looking to use it as of yet. And meanwhile, on the opposite side of things, Fnatic pull out their own smoke, and it looks like they are now going to go towards this top lane. If they can get a pickoff followed up with a tower, this would be fantastic. Yeah, certainly so. They'll put Trixie in the front lines, as he is one of the, the tankier members of their team. Members that have hit the pipe just sitting around the backside. Matumba Man pressing up forward, and... He's very close to level 16, so just wants to leech as much, much XP as possible. He does have the Empower on him right here, and uh, Cleave is maxed out. So if they get a good initiation, Matumba Man can just come in and drop the proverbial hammer. Yeah. Ideally, they would love to bait out Trixie, he gets lassoed, and they just stop it with the disruption and then just kind of counter back with it. But they're going to go ahead and pull the trigger. They're going right for the Wraith King. You know, he does have reincarnation available here, but they're going to try to target him down as much as possible. It is going to be the Haunt pulled out, and it looks like Trixie going way past and behind enemy lines, trying to get a hold of this Razor. is forced to pull out the BKB, and now Fnatic realize they might have gone a little too far looking to pull back, but they get the lasso on Trixie. They save him, jump in RP, coming out from Hani, and Matambo Man looking to pull out the God Strength and try to rip them all apart. Razor did end up going down. Laguna to blade fly out. It's Brew also to fall right now, so the two precious cores down. Wraith King down. There we go. <laughs> Three, four to fall at the end right there. Only Hani to fall on the side of Fnatic, and 
Well, this is going to be an easy 2-1 oh. cleanup. Boogie making the big plays right there. Trixie was so close to falling, but he got off the defensive disruption while he was on top of the fire. Ha or Trixie popped out, ate his stick charges, used the drum charge, and just headed for the hills, and that was enough to ensure his survival. If that disruption wasn't there, he was all but dead. The Wraith King was coming back up, ready to smack him down with a Wraith Fire Blast. And Fnatic just come out way ahead in that fight. Now 3,000 gold, 5,000 experience in their favor, and Trixie continues his streak of domination 7 Zero and nine. Yep. And it was Ooh. it was mostly Hani in that one nursing back the RP a bit, waiting oh for the yeah. prime moment. He jumps in, gets a nice setup right there, which allows Matama Man to unleash a fury. Top that together with the additional stunts coming out from your Lena, and it's it's got ugly real quick for X game as they only managed to pick off one casualty for it. So Everything's looking really nice here for Fnatic here, and they clean up a couple of ancient stacks right here from a Tumba man who pushes on ahead to Cleave level Master 17. Flex, dude. Yeah, yeah, he's just cutting down those 4. ancients. 4.3k for this man. He he swole as all God's hell. So mm -hmm. we'll see what the next primary item is going to be for this gentleman. I mean, I want the axe, goddammit, but I don't think we're going to be seeing it. Yeah, not anytime soon, at least. Dire side move towards the Roche pit, but they uh, don't commit for it. They a bad idea. chip at him and go. Eh, I don't know about this, guys. What's the cooldown on RP again? Look at their watches. All oh, right, maybe we shouldn't try this. Uh, coming up in about eight seconds, Fnatic start making movements towards the pit, and uh, that'll that'll be the end of it. Now, Dire Side do have some decent vision down. Uh, they do have uh, wards kind of all over the place, one in the Radiant Jungle, one on the high ground outside of the Roche Pit, uh, and then they've got a whole bunch of sentries down around the Roche Pit as well, trying to secure the vision around that quadrant of the map, and stands to reason it is something that they'll try to go for. Equal finds himself a haste rune down bottom, and yeah, they, they really want this, but notably nervous about committing for Roche. Mm-hmm. And you know what? It all it takes for Fnatic is just Trixie to press R, and they'll know what's going on. So there's a reason to be so nervous about doing it. And well, with Trixie yeah. building in a wealth of farm for himself, he's going to look to complete this heart relatively <laughs> soon. Already has the money for the Vite Booster now, and it's just going to be a short time away before this Spectre becomes so hard to take down. So. You know, things are looking still very promising Dying here. Another tier tower. one. I mean, attack. they already are so far ahead, and they haven't even cleared out some of these basic towers yet Dying at about 30 minutes into the game. So only Shadow. more gold to inherit here in the near future. But look at this bad rider, Dying Moonlight Shadow. Tower. Blink forward. They want to get a hold of what they can, and they grab the Lena. Maybe not the best target, but to try to get what they can out of it. Jump forward. RP catches on two. They quickly swift down. Ar the Wraith King's life falls. Razor ends up going down. Wraith King. Falls promptly after, and the brew, the big manly Matamba man, looking to catch out what he can. Bat desperately hiding in the corner, whittling himself, making sure, please Jeez. don't catch me, but that's Jeez. it. We're done. X Games has had enough. It's very apparent that Fnatic are just too strong for him. All right, Trixie playing it perfect, 9-0 and 12. You know, I, I would have thought that they might hang around a, a little more with those recent changes. I think there's a little bit more incentive to hang in until kind of the bitter end until you're stuck with all five dead without buyback, something like that. And, uh, you know, if you can get a big 5,000 gold bounty or something, you know, maybe, maybe, just maybe, you can call your way back. But Fnatic did have pretty, pretty significant control of that game. Yeah, I, I don't think there was even a, hoi, uh, a hope as far as bounty of just getting him back into it because even yeah. if you managed to get a hold of the Spectre, Matombo Man was right there on the Sven to be able to also bring the pain. And there was clearly no one on the side of X game that would be able to contest either of them. So I think it was a worthy call to call it the GG. I mean, their star ladder run was already over, but, yeah. you know, hopefully they're trying to stay out from the bottom. Yeah, definitely. It also gets extra tricky once Spectre grabs the Radiance because they had two Blink Dagger initiators, the Brewmaster and the Bat, and if they're not the ones initiating every single time, mm -hmm. Trixie's going to hop in. He's just going to win... Uh, counter those blinks and not much that they can do so that'll wrap up our first game of coverage today we've got three more coming up next uh, we'll have hellraisers versus cleave and then we get into the big ends the secret versus fanatic then secret versus navi to get things rounded off so thank you for joining us guys stick around because there's plenty more dota coming your way